Recently, I did a video explaining my issues with part 2 of Chainsaw Man. I spoke about how the pacing was a bit shit. And how everything so far has been nothing but build up. Well, ever since the introduction of the Falling Devil, it's starting to seem like those chapters of build up are starting to pay off. And pay off big time. Because what the f? This man, Fujimoto, simply does not miss. He somehow made me appreciate everything that happened in the beginning of part two. He did the unthinkable. He made it worth it. So worth it that I even went back and reread part two. And I'll put it like this. If you don't like part two so far, go back and read it from the beginning. I bet you will appreciate it. First off, the fucking foreshadowing is scrumptious. Since the beginning of part 2, we're showing how Asa's biggest problem is falling. She's f***ing clumsy and always at the worst times. The first time we see this is when she falls and kills the class pet chicken in front of the whole class. Later on, we find out it's something that happens to her often. It happens at her birthday parties. It happens at track meets. We see it happen when she tries to save Yuko. And we see it happen when she breaks her phone in the aquarium. The chick is the complete opposite of Clutch. She literally chokes in every crucial moment of her life. Skip Bayless needs to leave LeBron alone and talk about her for now on. Anyways, falling in a physical sense isn't the only way to fall. We also see her fall into depression multiple times and even kind of fall in love with Denji after their first date. This all ties in well with the falling devil being sent to earth to put her on a plate. And can I just take a second to say this thing is terrifying. Why is she wearing chef's attire? Anyways, the falling devil's ability seems to have something to do with the dark spots of people's brains. For example, when she used the ability on Asa, she had to relive the moment her cat was killed by a foster mom and when she used it on Denji he was reminded of Aki and Power's death. She's kinda in her Itachi bag with this because this kinda reminds me of Genjutsu. Anyways the falling devil is literally the worst devil for Asa to face since she's you know Asa and she constantly overthinks and since Denji is pretty much Asa's polar opposite it's likely best he fights her. The falling devil hints at this when she says that it's her first time being on the menu after Denji cuts through her and it also shows since Denji was able to resist her falling powers by cutting into his brain. Now what all of this did for me is get me excited for for the other things that are being set up. Like Yoshida, he's kinda like the Makima of this part because literally no one knows what his deal is. All we know is that he says he's here to protect Denji and that for some reason he knows everything. And you know how it is when somebody just be knowing shit. Knowing too much is a dead giveaway that you're up to no good, buddy. There also hasn't been much said about Nayata, but after this encounter, she'll definitely get some type of development. Look, what I'm trying to say is that part two is doing good so far. It's different from part one, but it still has that unpredictable pacing that part one has. It's a part of his charm. It's how Fujimoto does things. So just let him cook. And there's still more to learn about Fujimoto. So if you want to learn a little bit more about his writing style and creations, check out this video. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Boot out.